Hey hackers, welcome to The Commit. We're back in Metric Collective talking to Kevin and this week we're actually gonna break down a hypothetical technical problem and show you how to solve it and how to think through it. Kevin, let's get started. What are we gonna look at? Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to program a single game of Battleship. Each game will have about two players. Each player is going to have a grid. The grid is typically 10 by 10. Let's go ahead and make up some ships and some ship names. We'll call them S2 and that has a length of two, S3, and that has a length of three, S4 is four, and S6 is six. So there are two phases in the game. There's a setup phase. During the setup phase, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take each of the four available ships and you're gonna place them somewhere on your grid. Okay. There's a couple rules about how you can place them. Okay, so a ship might go there. That, that would generally be legal. Yep. Uh, but we can't have it go off the board. Nothing like right. that and we can't have it intersect another ship, so that won't work. And then the next phase of the game, we're gonna call missile firing. So during missile firing, what you're doing is you're announcing a coordinate on the other player's board, and they're going to determine whether or not that corresponds to a ship. Right. Okay? If, for example, it doesn't, if we fired right there, we would say miss. If we hit right there, we would call that a hit, because yeah. that corresponds to a position on the ship. But then if we do the last one, what we're actually going to say there is not hit, but sink. We're going to say that you sank a particular ship, we're going to identify which one, so sink S2. What we're trying to represent here is a grid on which people have placed their ships. Okay. So the most natural thing that I can think of is that we're going to use a two-dimensional array for that. Right. Okay, so if you're in Python, it's a list of lists. If you're in a language that has a more natural matrix structure, you can use whatever you want, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a 10 by 10 uh, matrix, okay? Got it. And we would address particular elements within the matrix uh, by something like M of X, Y, and that would be uh, either true or false. So what we're going to use is a Boolean to represent whether or not there is a ship at that particular location. And so now we've gotta talk about the setup phase. Naturally, at some point, we're going to have in our code something that displays all the different types of ships that there are. So start point and direction. Mm -hmm. So direction's really just going to be either down or right. We can imagine a function that generally takes a length, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a direction, which again is either down or right, mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to produce a set of x, y points. So if d is equal to down, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding to the y coordinate each time, yeah. and I'm going to be doing that for however many uh, right. points. So you take the here. length and you take the start and right. then add that. So I might do 4i in you know, 0 to l yield x and y plus i. This is a really naive solution to this problem, or you could just say this is good enough. Totally up to the interviewer's style. Uh, as an interviewee, I would generally notice that that wasn't the most elegant solution, and I might ask if they want to see something better or whether. Right. Do you okay want me to focus here? To, yeah. To pull this so let's down. say we're okay with that because ultimately we can't get it to be more efficient, anyways. Recall, as we uh, fire our missiles, the way that works is you basically announce some coordinate on the other player's board that you want to hit. Yeah. So we're going to call our method fire. Uh, it's going to take an X and a Y, and it's going to emit a result. So first thing first, we want to check if there is a ship at that location. Okay. Okay. So we're going to basically say if matrix of X, Y, and if there is something there, we're going to say hit, and otherwise we're going to say miss. But you'll realize here uh, I'm in a bit of a pickle because I don't know how to say sync. Right. Uh, so we need some way of recording hits. Right. So would you make a separate matrix where you store the hits? That's one option. Um, I'm, I'm going to do something a little bit easier. Okay. And I'm just going to, at that point, say m of x, y equals false. So I'm just going to flip that so that if you try to hit the same spot again, it's okay. a miss. Uh, but that really still doesn't get me the whole way 
because then I don't know how to tell if there's any pieces of that ship remaining. Right. I've, I've got to do something clever where I'm looking at all the points next to it. And now that I think about it, you know, if there was a two ship right next to a three ship, I don't know uh, if that's whether which parts really belong to which ship. So it's kind of right. confusing. So I think we need to store our original matrix a little bit differently. We need to get some more information in there to determine whether or not there's a ship. So one thing we can do is uh, store the actual names of the ships in this matrix okay. uh, instead of just Booleans for whether or not there's a ship there. So in this world, what I'm doing is uh, I have like S3, 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 S2, S2, and then we just got null for everything else. Okay. And so now we've got a representation of which ships are which. Uh, the algorithm that we talked about before for doing the setup, that's basically the same, except for instead of setting things to true, we're setting them to the name right, of the ship. Right, we set it to the ship name, uh, which we have at that point. Right. Uh, some people, they might now at this point move to storing a list of ships. They might try to go with some more fancy database type solution, which could have a more substantial impact on that procedure. Got it. Okay. So now what we're doing here is we're basically going to check uh, again, if m of x, y, uh, depending on your language, you might have to ask if it's not null, but you know, basic concept there. What we're then going to do is we're going to store this somewhere in like a temp variable. So this is the ship that is at that location. So that might be S2 or S3 or whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just like we said before, we're going to clear that value. So mm -hmm. what you'd basically be doing to this is you'd be erasing that S2 and you'd be marking a null inside of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're going to check if there are any S2s remaining on the board. Okay, so we've recorded the ships here. Yeah, and so now we need to change the procedure by which we fire missiles. Okay, okay. so before what we were doing was we were checking uh, if that value was true. And uh, if so, we were setting it to false just to mark that there was no longer a ship that you can hit there. Now we got to do that a little bit differently. We're going to ask if it's not null. And uh, in that case, uh, what we want to do first is uh, remember what ship was there. So mm -hmm. we want to write down that it was S2. So we might say like S equals the current value of XY. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to erase it. So we're going to set that to null. So it's essentially a missing ship. Okay. Okay. Now what we need to do is look through the entire matrix and see if there are any remaining ships uh, on the board. You might notice that in order to do that, I need to check 100 different things. Right. Uh, that's 10 by 10. That S2, realistically, it should be proximal to the one that you just hit. Computers are really fast. So this is where different interviewer styles are going to vary a little bit. Uh, they might want to see a problem, uh, a solution that's optimal from, from the sense of big O notation. Okay. Uh, they might be looking for something that was optimal even if this was a million by a million and there are a million ships. Uh, I think that generally when you're looking at hypothetical problems, unless they specify that kind of scale of data, what they're really looking for is actual performances on actual commodity hardware. Okay. So the fact that we have to go through and check a hundred different elements isn't that big of a deal. Right. So we might then, you know, use some kind of matrix iterator uh, over the matrix, and uh, if the uh, matrix of X Y is uh, equal to the ship that used to be in, in our current location, then we're just going to say hit because that means there's some pieces of that ship left out there. Right. Uh, and if we make it to the end of this loop, uh, then we're going to say sync and we're going to name the ship uh, that we found there. Awesome. Okay. And then the else branch, uh, if there wasn't a ship there at all, it's we a can miss. just say miss. And so there we have a new perfectly valid solution to Battleship. So that's how you ace Battleship.